Paradise Lost, Book 4 Oh, for that warning voice, which he who saw the apocalypse heard cry in heaven aloud. Then when the dragon, put to second route, came furious down to be revenged on men. Woe to the inhabitants on earth, that now, while time was, our first parents had been warned. The coming of thy secret foe and scaped happy so scaped his mortal snare. For now, Satan, now first inflamed with rage, came down. The tempter, the accuser of mankind, to wreck on innocent, frail man his loss of that first battle and his fight to hell. Yet not rejoicing in his speed, though bold, far off and fearless, not with cause to boast, begins his dire attempt, which neither birth nor rolling boils in his tumultuous breast, and like a devilish engine back recoils upon himself. Horror and doubt distract his troubled thoughts, and from the bottom stir the hell within him, from within him hell he brings, and round about him, nor from hell one step no more than from himself can fly by change of place. Now conscience wakes despair that slumber, wakes the bitter memory of what he was, what is, and what must be worse of worse deeds worse sufferings must ensue sometimes towards eden which now in his view lay pleasant his grieve looked he fixes sad sometimes towards heaven and the full blazing sun which now sat high in his meridian tower thus much revolving thus in size begun o oh, thou that was surpassing glory crowned Look, sis, from thou sole dominion like the god of this new world, at whose sight all the stars hide their diminished heads. To thee I call, but with no friendly voice, and add thy name, O sun, to tell thee how I hate thy beams, that bring to me my resemblance from what state I fell, how glorious once above thy sphere till pride and worse ambition threw me down, warring in heaven against heaven's matchless king. Oh, wherefore, he deserved so such return from me, whom he created what I was in that bright eminence, and with his good unbraided none. Nor was his service hard. What could be less than to afford him praise the easiest recompense, and pay him thanks, how due, not all his good proved ill in me. And what but malice, lifted up so high I disdained subjection, and thought one step higher would set me highest, and in a moment quit the debt immense of endless gratitude so burthensome, still paying, still to owe, forgiveness, what from him I still received, and understood not that a grateful mind by Owen owes not, but still pays, at once indebted and discharged. What burden then? Oh, had his powerful destiny ordained me some inferior angel, I had stood then happy. No unbounded hope had raised ambition, yet why not? Some other power, as great might have aspired, and me, though mean, drawn to his part. But other powers, as great, fell not, but stand unshaken, from within or from without, to all temptations armed. Hadst thou the same free will and power to stand? Thou hadst. Whom hadst thou then, or what to accuse? But heaven's free will dealt equally to all. Be then his love accused, since love or hate to me alike it deals eternal woe. Nay, cursed be thou, since against his thy will choose freely what it now so justly rues. Me, miserable, which way shall I flee, infinite wrath and infinite despair? Which way I fly is hell, myself am hell. 
and in the lowest deep, a lower deep still threatening to devour me open wide, to which the hell I suffer seems a heaven. Oh, then, at least relent. Is there no place left for repentance, none for pardon left? None left but by submission, and that word disdain forbids me, and my dread of shame among the spirits beneath, whom I seduced with other promises and other vaunts. Then to submit, boasting I could subdue the omnipotent. Eh me, they little know how dearly I abide that boast so vain. Under what torments inwardly I groan, while they adore me on the throne of hell, with diadem and sceptre high advance, the lower still I fall, only supreme in misery. Such joy ambition finds. But say, I could repent and could obtain by act of grace my former state. How soon would Hyeth recall high thoughts? How soon uneasy what feigned submission swore? Ease would recant vows made in pain as violent and void. For never can true reconcilement grow where wounds of deadly hate have pierced so deep, which would but lead me to a worse relapse and heavier fall. So should I purchase dear short intermission bought with double smart? This knows my punisher, therefore as far from granting he, as I from begging peace. All hope excluded thus, Behold, instead of us outcast, exiled, his new delight, mankind created, and for him this world. So farewell, hope, and with hope, farewell, fear, farewell, remorse. All good to me is lost. Evil be thy my good. By thee, at least, divided empire with heaven's king I hold. By thee, and more than half perhaps will reign as man ere long, and this new world shall know. Thus while he spake, each passion dimmed his face, for eyes changed with pale ear, uh, envy and despair, which marred his borrowed visage, and betrayed him counterfeit, if any eye be held. For heavenly minds from such distempers foul are ever clear, whereof he soon aware. Each perturbation smoothed with outward calm, artificer of fraud, and was the first that practice falsehood under saintly show. Deep malice to conceal, couched with revenge, yet not enough had practice to deceive Uriel once warned, whose eye pursued him down, the way he went, and on the Assyrian mount, saw him disfigured, more than could be before spirit of happier sort, his gestures fierce. He marked a mad demeanour, then alone, as he supposed, all unobserved, unseen. So on he fares, and to the border comes of Eden, where delicious paradise, now nearer, crowns him with the enclosure green. As with rural mound, the champagne head of a steep wilderness, whose hairy sides with thicket overgrown, grotesque and wild, access denied, and overhead upgrew insuperable height of loftiest shade, cedar and pine, and fir, and branching palm, a sylvan scene as the ranks ascend shade above shade, a woody theatre of stateliest view. Yet higher than thy tops the verdious wall of paradise upsprung, which to our general sire gave prospect large, into his never empire neighbouring round. And higher than that wall, a circling row of goodliest trees, loaden with fairest fruit. Blossoms and fruits at once of golden hue appeared, with gay enamelled colours mixed. On which the sun more glad impressed his beams, than in fair evening cloud, or humid bow, when God half shrobed the earth, so lovely seemed that landscape, and a pure, now purer air, meets his approach and to the heart inspires vernal delight and joy, able to drive all sadness but despair. Now gentle gales fanning their odiferous wings dispense native perfumes, and whisper whence they stole those balmy spoils. 
as went to them who sail beyond the Cape of Hope and now are past Mozambique. Off at sea, northeast winds blow Sabian odours from the spy shore of Arabia the blessed. With such delay, well pleased, they slack their course, and many a league cheered with the grateful smell old ocean smiles. So entertained those odious sweets, the fiend who came their bane. Though with them better pleased than Amodius with the fishy fume, that drove him, though enamoured from the spouse of Tobit's son, and with a vengeful seat from Media post to Egypt, they're fast bound. Now to the ascent of that steep savage hill, Satan had journeyed on, pensive and slow, but further away found none so thick entwined as one continued break, and undergrowth of shrubs and tangling bushes had perplexed all path of man or beast that passed that way. One gate there only was, and that looked east on the other side, which when the arch fell and saw due entrance he disdained, and in contempt, at one slight bound high overleaped all bound of hill or highest wall, and sheer within lights on his feet, as when a prowling wolf, whom hunger drives to seek new haunt for prey, watching where shepherds pen their flocks at eve in hurdled cots amid the field secure, leaps over the fence and with ease into the fold. Nor as a thief bent to unhoard the cash of some rich burgher, whose substantial doors, cross-barred and bolted fast, fear no assault. In at the window climbs, or over the tiles, so climbed this first grand thief into God's fold. So since into his church lewd hirelings climb, thence up he flew, and on the tree of life, the middle tree and highest there that grew, sat like a cormorant, yet not true life thereby regained, but sat devising death to them who lived, nor on the virtue thought of that life-giving plant, but only used the prospect, what well as had been the pledge of immortalities, so little knows any but God alone to value right the good before him, but prevents best things to worst abuse or to the meanest use. Beneath him with new wonder now he views to all delight of human sense exposed. In narrow room nature's whole wealth, yea more, a heaven on earth, a blissful paradise of God the garden was. By him in the east of Eden planted Eden stretched her line from Uran eastward to the royal towers of Great Seleucia, built by Grecian kings, nor were the sons of Eden long before dwelt in Talasia. In this pleasant soil his far more pleasant god and god ordained. Out of a fertile ground he caused to grow all trees of noblest kind for sight, smell, taste, and all amid them stood the tree of life high eminent blooming ambrosia fruit of vegetable gold and next to life our death the tree of knowledge grew fast by knowledge of good bought dear by knowing ill southward through eden went a river large nor changed his course but through the shaggy hill passed underneath engulfed for god had thrown that mountain as his garden mould high raised upon the rapid current which through veins of porous earth with kindly first updrawn rose a fresh fountain and with many a rill watered the garden thence united fell down the steep glade and met the never flood which from his darksome passage now appears and now divided into four main streams runs divers wandering many a famous realm and country whereof he needs no account but rather to tell how if art could tell how from the sapphire font the crisp brooks rolling on orient pearl and sands of gold with maize error under pendant shades ran nectar visiting each plant and fed flowers worthy of paradise which not nice art in beds and curious knots but nature boom proud forth profuse on hill and dale and plain both were the morning sun first warmly smot the open field and where the unpierced shade inbound and noontide bows. Thus was this place, a happy rural seat of various view, groves whose rich trees wept odious gums and balm, 
Others, his fruit burnished with golden rind, hung amiable. Hesperian fables true. If true, here only and of delicious taste, betwixt some lawns, or level downs and flocks, grazing the tender herb, were interposed or palmy hillock or the flowery lap of some irregular valley spread her store flowers of all hue and without thorn the rose another side umbrageous grots and caves of cool recess over which the mountain in vine lays forth her purple grape and gently creeps luxuriant meanwhile murmuring waters fall down the slope hills dispersed or in a lake that to the fringe bank with myrtle crowned, her crystal mirror holds, unite thy streams. The birds their choir apply, airs, venerable airs, breathing the smell of field and grove, attune the trembling leaves, while universal pan knit with the graces and the hours in dance led on the eternal spring. Not that fair field of Anna, where prospering gathering flowers, herself a fairy flower by gloomy dis was gathered, which cost caress all that pain to seek her through the world, nor that sweet grove of Daphne nor Orionates, and the inspired Castellinian spring might with the paradise of Eden strive. Nor that nation ill girt with the river Triton, where old Cham, whom gentles Ammon call, and Libyan Jove, hid Amenthrio and her florid son, young Bacchus, from his stepdame Rhesus' eye. Nor were Abyssian kings, fair issue god, Mount Amara, though this by some supposed true paradise under the Epiope line, by Nilus head enclosed with shining rock, a whole day's journey high, but wide remote from the Assyrian garden, where the fiend saw under lighted all delight, all kind of living creatures new to sight and strange. Two of far nobler shape, erect and tall, godlike erect, with native honour clad in naked majestic seemed lords of all, and worthier seemed, for in their looks divine, the image of their glorious maker shone, truth, wisdom, sanctitude, severe and pure, severe, but in tall through law, freedom place the whence true or freight in men though both not equal as their sex not equal seemed for contemplation he and volor formed for softness she and sweet attractive grace he for god only she for god in him his fair large front and eye sublime declared absolute rule and hyacinth in locks round from his parted forelock many hung clustering but not beneath his shoulders broad, she, as her veil down to the slender waist, her unadorned golden tressels wore, dishrivelled, but in wanton ringlets waved as the vine curls her tendrils, which implied subjection, but required with gentle sway. And by her yielded, by him best received, yielded with coy submission, modest pride, and sweet reluctance, amorous delay, nor those mysterious parts were then concealed. Dan was not guilty shame, dishonest shame of nature's works, honour dishonourable, sin bred. How have ye troubled all mankind with shoes instead, more shoes of seeming pure, and banished it from man's life, his happiest life? Simplicity and spotless innocence, so passed they naked on, nor shunned the sight of God or angel, for they fought no ill. So hand in hand they passed, the loveliest pair that ever since in love's embraces met, Adam, the goodliest man of men since born, his sons, the fairest of her daughters Eve, under a tuft of shade that on green stood whispering soft by a fresh fountain side. They sat them down, and after no more toil, of their sweet gardening labour then sufficed, to recommend cool zephyr and made ease more easy wholesome first and appetite more grateful to their supper fruits they fell nectar and fruits which the compliment boughs yielded them sidelong as they sat recline on the soft downy bank damasked with flowers the savoury pulp they chew and in the rind 
Still they first did scoop the breaming stream. No gentle purposes, no enduring smiles, wanted no youthful delights as beseems fair couple. Linked in happy nuptial league, alone as they, about their frisking played all beasts of the earth. Since wild and of all chase in woods or wilderness, forest or den, sporting the lion ramped and in his paw dandled the kid. Bears, tigers, ounces pods gambled before them, the unwieldy elephant to make them mirth, used on all his might and reft his little probesque, closed the serpent's lie, insinuating, wove with Gordian twine his bearded train and his fatal guile gave proof unheeded. Others on the grass crouched and now filled with pasture gazing sat. Oh bedward ruminating, for the sun declined was hasting now with prone career to the ocean ills, and in the ascending scale of heaven in the stars that usher evening rose. When Satan, still in gaze, at first he stood, scarce thus at length failed speech recovered sad. Oh hell! What do mine eyes with grief behold? Into our room of bliss thus high advance creatures of other mould. Earth-born perhaps, not spirits, yet to heavenly spirits bright little inferior, whom my thoughts pursue with wonder, and could love. So lively shines in them divine resemblance, and such grace, the hand that formed them on their shape hath poured. Ay, gentle pair, ye little think how nigh your change approaches, when all these delights will vanish and deliver ye to woe. More woe, the more your taste is now of joy. Happy, but for so happy ill secured, long to continue. And this high seat, your heaven, ill fenced for heaven to keep out such a foe as now is entered yet no purposed foe to you whom i could pity thus forlorn though i up pitied league with you i seek a mutual amity so straight so close that i with you must dwell or you with me henceforth my dwelling haply may not please like this far paradise your sense Yet such accept your maker's work. He gave it me, which, as I freely give, hell shall unfold, to entertain you to her widest gates and send forth all her kings. There will be room, not like these narrow limits, to receive your numerous offspring, if no better place. Thank him who puts me loath to this revenge on you who wrong me. Not for him who wronged. And should I lay at your harmless innocence, Melt as I do, yet public reason just, Honour and empire with revenge enlarged By conquering this new world, Compels me now to do what else though damned I should abhor. So spake the fiend, and with necessity, The tyrant's plea excused his devilish deeds, then from his lofty stand on that high tree, down he alights among the sportful herd of those four-footed kinds, himself now one, now other, as their shape served best his end nearer to view his prey, and unaspired to mark what of their state he more might learn by word or action marked, about them round a lion now he stalks with fiery glare, then as a tiger, who by chance hath spied in some perulial two gentle fawns at play, straight couches close, then rising changes oft his couchant watch, as one who chews his ground, whence rushing he might sure it seize them both gripped in each paw, when Adam, first of man to first of women, Eve thus moving speech, turned him all ear to hear new utterance flow. Sole partner and sole part of all these joys, dearer than self than all, needs must the power that made us, and for us this ample world be infinitely good, and of his good as liberal and free as infinite, that raised us from the dust and placed us here in all this happiness, 
You at his hand have nothing merited, nor can perform, or whereof he hath need. He who requires from us no other service than to keep this one, this easy change, of all the trees in paradise that bear delicious fruit so various, not to taste that only tree of knowledge, planted by the tree of life. So near grows death to life, what e'er death is, some dreadful thing no doubt. For well thou knowst God hath pronounced it death to taste that tree, the only sign of our obedience left among so many signs of power and rule conferred upon us, and dominion given over all other creatures that possesses earth, air and sea. Now let us not think hard, one easy prohibition, who enjoy free leave so large to all things else, and choice unlimited of manifold delights. But let us ever praise him and extol his bounty, following our delightful task to prune these growing plants and tend these flowers, which were it toilsome, yet with thee were sweet. To whom thus Eve replied, O thou for whom and from whom I was formed flesh of thy flesh, and without whom am to no end, my guide and head, what thou hast said is just and right. For we to him indeed all praises owe, and daily thanks. I chiefly too enjoy so far the happier lot, enjoying thee preeminent by so much odds, while thou, like consort to thee, self canst nowhere find. That day I oft remember, when from sleep I first awakened and found myself reposed, under a shade on flowers, much wondering where and what I was whence thither bought, and how. Not distant, far from thence, a murmuring sound of waters issued from a cave and spread into a liquid plain, then stood unmoved, pure as the expanse of heaven. I thither went, with unexperienced thought, and laid me down on the green bank, to look into the clear, smooth lake, that to me seemed another sky. And as I bent down to look, just opposite a shade within the watery gleam appeared bending to look on me i started back it started back but pleased i soon returned pleased it it returned as soon with answering looks of sympathy and love there i had fixed my eyes till now and pinned with vain desire had not a voice thus warned me what thou seest what there thou seest, fair creature, is thyself. With thee it came and goes, but follow me, and I will bring thee where no shadow stirs. Thy coming and thy soft embraces, he whose image thou art, him thou shalt enjoy inseparable, thine. To him shalt bear multitudes like thyself, and thence be called mother of human race. What could I do but follow straight, invisibly thus led, till I aspired thee, fair indeed and tall, under a plantain, yet me thought less fair, less winning soft, less amiable mild, then that smooth watery image back I turned, thou following criedest loud, returned fair Eve, whom fairest thou, whom thou fairest of him thou art. His flesh, his bone, to give thee, being I lent out of my side to thee, nearest my heart. Substantial life, to have thee by my side, henceforth an individual solace, dear. Part of my soul I seek thee, and thee claim my other half. With that thy gentle hand seized mine, I yielded, and from that time see how beauty is excelled by manly grace and wisdom, which alone is truly fair. So spake our general mother, and with eyes of conjugal attraction unreproved, a meek surrender, half embracing, leaned on our first father, half her swelling breast naked met his under the flowing gold of her loose trestles hid, he in delight both of her beauty and submissive charms, smiled with superior love, as Jupiter on Juno smiles. When he impregnates the clouds that shed May flowers, and pressed her matron lip with kisses pure, 
A side the devil turned for envy, yet with jealous lure malign eyed them askance, and to himself thus plained. Sight hateful, sight tormenting, thus these two in paradise in one and other's arms, the happier Eden, shall enjoy their fill of bliss on bliss, while I to hell am thrust. Where neither joy nor love but fierce desire, among our other torments not the least still unfulfilled with pain of longing pines. Yet let not me forget what I have gained from their own mouths. All is not theirs, it seems. One fatal tree there stands of knowledge called, forbidden them to taste. Knowledge forbidden, suspicious, reasonless. Why should their lord envy them that? Can it be sin to know? Can it be death? Or do they only stand by ignorance? Is that their happy state? The proof of their obedience and their faith? O oh, fair foundation laid whereon to build their ruin, hence I will excite their minds with more desire to know and to reject envious commands, invented with design to keep them low, whom knowledge might exalt equal with gods, aspiring to be such. They taste and die, what likelier can ensue? But first, with narrow search, I must walk around this garden, and no corner leave unspied. A chance but chance may lead where I may meet some wandering spirit of heaven by fountain side, or in thick shade retired from him to draw what fervour would be learnt. Live while you may, yet happier pair. Enjoy till I return short pleasures for long woes are to succeed. So saying, his proud step he scornful turned, but with sly circumspection, and began through wood, through waste, o'er hill, o'er dale his roam. Meanwhile, in utmost longitude, where heaven with earth and ocean meets, the setting sun slowly descended, and with right aspect against the eastern gate of paradise, levelled his evening rays. It was a rock of alabaster, piled up to the clouds, conspicuous far, winding with one ascent, accessible from earth, one entrance high. The rest was craggy cliff that overhung still as it rose, impossible to climb. Betwixt these rocky pillars Gabriel sat, chief of the angelic guards, awaiting night. About him exercised heroic gains, the unarmed youth of heaven, but nigh at hand celestial armory, shields, helms, and spears hung high with diamond flaming and with gold. Thither came Uriel, gliding through the heaven on a sunbeam, swift as a shooting star in autumn freights the night, when vapours fired impress the air, and shrews the mariner from the point of his compass to beware impetuous winds, he thus began in haste. Gabriel, to thee thy cause by lot have given charge and strict watch that to this happy place no evil thing approach or enter in. This day at high of noon came to my sphere a spirit, zealous as he seemed to know more of the Almighty's work and chiefly man, God's latest image. I described his way bent on all speed and marked his airy gate, but in the mount that lies from Eden north where he first alighted, soon discerned his looks alien from heaven. With passions foul obscured, mine eyes pursued him still, but under shade lost sight of him. One of the banished crew, I fear, hath ventured from the deep to raise new troubles. Him they care must be found. To whom the winged warrior Vush returned. Uriel, no wonder if thy perfect sight, amid the sun's bright circle where thou sittest, see far and wide, in at this gate non pass. The vigilance here placed but such as come well known from heaven, and since meridian hour no creature vents. If spirit of sought, so mind it. Have o'erlipped these earthy bounds on purpose. Hard thou knowest is to exclude spiritual substance with corporal bar. But if within the circuit of these walks, in whatsoever shape he lurk, of whom thou tellest, by morrow dawning I shall know. 
So promised he, and Uriel, to his charge, returned on that bright beam, whose point now raised bore him slope downward to the sun, now fallen beneath the Azores. Whether the prime orb, incredible how swift, had thither rolled than Oriel, or less voluble, earth, by shorter flight to the east, had left him there, arraying with reflected purple and gold, the clouds that on his western throne attend. Now came still evening on, and twilight grey had in sober livery all things clad. Silence accompanied for beast and bird, they to their grassy couch. These to their nests were slunk, all but the wakeful nightingale. Still all night long her amorous descent sung. Silence was pleased, now growed the firmament with living sapphires. Hesperus that led the starry host rode brightest till the moon rising in clouded majestic at length apparent queen unveiled her peerless light and over the dark her silver mantle threw wed adam thus to eve fair consort the hour of night and all things now return to rest mind us of like repose since god hath set labour and rest as day and night to men successive, and timely dew of sleep now falling with soft slumberous weight inclines our eyelids. Other creatures all day long rove idle unimplored, and less need rest. Man hath his daily work of body or mind appointed, which declares his dignity, and the regard of heaven on all his ways while other animals, unattractive, range, and of their doings, God takes no account. Tomorrow ere fresh mornings streak the east with first approach of light. We must be risen, and at our present labour, to reform your flowery abhors, yonder allies green, our walks at noon, with branches overgrown, that mock our scant manuring, and require more hands than ours to lock their wanton grove those blossoms also, and those dropping gums. Let lie be strown unsightly and unsmooth, ask riddance, and if we mean to tread with ease, meanwhile at nature wills night birds us rest. To whom thus Eve, with perfect beauty adorned, My author and disposer, what thou biddest, unargued I obey, so God ordains, God is thy law, thy mind to know no more. Is woman's happiest place, knowledge, and her praise. With thee conversing, I forget all time, all seasons and their change, all pleas alike. Sweet is the breath of morn, her raising sweet with charm of earliest birds. Pleasant the sun, when first on this delightful land he spreads his orient beams, on herb, tree, fruit, and flower glistening with dew, fragrant and fertile earth, after soft showers, and sweep the coming on grateful evening mild, then silent night. With this her solemn bird and this fair moon, and these the gems of heaven, her starry train, but neither breath of morn when she ascends with charm of earliest birds, nor raising sun on this delightful land, nor herb, fruit, flower glistening with dew nor fragrance after showers nor grateful evening mild nor silent night with this her solemn bird no walk by moon or glittering star light without thee is sweet but wherefore all night long shine these for whom this glorious sight when sleep hath shut all eyes to whom our general ancestor replied daughter of god and man accomplished eve those have their course to finish round the earth by morrow evening and from land to land in order though to nations yet unborn ministering light prepared by set and rise least total darkness should night regain her old possession and extinguish life in nature and all things which these soft fires not only enlighten, but with kindly heat of various influence foment and warm, temper or nourish, or in part shed down their stellar virtue on all kinds that grow on earth. 
made hereby apter to receive perfection from sun's more potent ray. These then, though all beheld in deep of night, shine not in vain, nor think, though men were none, that heaven would want spectators, God want praise. Millions of spatial creatures walk the earth unseen, both when we wake and when we sleep. All these with ceaseless praise his works behold, both day and night. How often from the steep of echoing hill or thicket have we heard celestial voices to the midnight air, soul or responsive each to other's note, singing thy greater creator. Oft in bands while they keep watch, or nightly rounding walk with heavenly touch of instrumental sounds in full harmonic number joined, their songs divide the night and lift our thoughts to heaven. Thus talking hand in hand alone they passed onto their blissful bower. It was a place chosen by the sovereign planter when he framed all things to man's delightful use. The roof of thickest covert was in woven shade, laurel and myrtle, and what higher grew of firm and fragrant leaf. On either side a canvas and each odorous bushy shrub fenced up the verdant wall. Each butyrous flower, iris or hues, roses and gesamin, reared high their flourished heads between and wart mosaic. Under the violet, crocus and hyacinth, with rich inlay, broidered the ground more coloured than with stone of costliest emblem of a creature here beast bird insect or worm durst enter none such was thy awe of man in shadier bower more sacred and sequest through but veined pan or silverness never slept nor nymph nor faunus haunted here in close recess with flowers garlands and sweet smelling herbs Espoused Eve decked first her nuptial bed, and heavenly choirs the harmonian sung. What day the genial angel to our sire brought her naked beauty more adorned, more lovely than Pandora, whom the gods endowed with all their gifts, and oh to like in sad event, when the unwiser son of Japhet, bought by Hermes, she ensnarled mankind with her fair looks to be avenged on him who had stole Joe's authentic fire. Thus at their shady lodge arrived, both stood, both turned and under open sky adored the god that both made sky, air, earth and heaven, which they beheld, the moon's resplendent globe and starry pole. Thou also madest the night, maker omnipotent and thou the day which we in our appointed work employed have finest happy in our mutual help and mutual love the crown of all our bliss ordained by thee and this delicious place for us too large where thy abundance wants partakers and uncropped falls to the ground but thou hast promised from us to a race to fill the earth who shall with us extol thou goodness infinite both when we wake and when we seek as now thy gift of sleep this said unanimous and of a rites observing none but adoration pure which god likes best into their inmost bower handed they went and is the putting off these troublesome disguises which we wear straight side by side were laid nor turned i ween adam from his fair spouse nor eve the rites mysterious of connubial love refused whatever hypocrites austerely talk of purate and place and innocence defaming as impure what god declares pure and commands to some leaves free to all our maker bids increase who bids a stain but our destroyer foe to god and man hail wedded love mysterious law true source of human offspring soul proprietary in paradise all things common else by thee adulterous lust was driven from men among the bestial herds to range by thee founded in reason loyal just and pure relations dear and all the charities of father son and brother first were known far be it that i should write thee sin or blame 
or think the unbefitting holiest place, perpetual fountain of domestic sweets, whose bed is undefiled and just pronounced, present or past as saints and patriarchs used. Here love his golden shafts implores, here lights his constant lamp and waves his purple wings. Reigns here and revels, not in the bought smile of harlots, loveless, joyless, unendeared, casual fruition, nor in court amures, mixed dance, or wanton mask, or midnight bell, or serenade, which the starved lover sings to his proud fair, best quitted with disdain. Thus, lured by nightingales in bracing slet, and on their naked limbs the flowery roof shrewed roses which the morn repaired, Sleep on, blessed pair, and O oh, yet happiest if ye seek no happier state, and know to know no more. Now had night measured with her shadowy cone, halfway uphill this vast sublunar vault, and from their ivory port the cherubim forth issuing at the accustomed hour stood armed to their night watchers in warlike parade, when Gabriel to his next in power thus spake Uziel half these draw off and coast the south with strictest watch these other wheel the north our circuit meets full west as flame they part half wheeling to the shield half to the spear from these two strong and subtle spirits he called that near him stood and gave them thus in charge Ephuriel and Cephon with winged speed search through this garden, leave unsearched no nook, but chiefly who those two fair creatures lodge, now laid perhaps asleep secure of harm. This evening from the sun's decline arrived, who tells of some inferior spirit seen, hitherward bent, who could have thought, escaped the bars of hell. On errand bad, no doubt, such way ye find, seize fast and hither bring. So saying, on he led his radiant files, dazzling the moon. These to the bower direct, in search of whom they sought. Him they found, squat like a toad, close at the ear of Eve, essaying by his devilish art to reach the organs of her fancy, and with them forge illusions as he list, fantasisms and dreams, or, if inspiring venom, he might taint the animal spirits that from pure blood arise, like gentle breasts from rivers pure. Thence raise at least distempted, discontented thoughts, vain hopes, vain aims, inordinate desires, blown up with high conceits, engendering pride, him thus intent, if real, with his spear touched lightly, for no falsehood can endure touch of celestial temper but returns of force to its own likeness. Up he starts, discovered and surprised, as when a spark lights on a heap of nitrous powder, laid fit for the tonsome magazine to store against the rumoured war. A smutty grain, with sudden blaze diffused, inflames the air. So started up in his own shape, the fiend, backstepped those two fair angels, half amazed, so sudden to behold the grisly king, yet thus unmoved with fear, accost him soon. Which of these rebel spirits adjourning to hell comest thou? Escapest thou prison, and transformed, why sittest thou like an enemy in wait here watching at the head of these that sleep? Know ye not? then said Satan, filled with scorn. Know ye not me? Ye knew me once, no mate, for you. They're sitting where you didst not saw, not to know me argues yourselves unknown, the lowest of your fung. Or if ye know, why ask ye, and superfarious begin your message like to end as much in vain? To whom was Zephon answering scorn with scorn? Think not, revolted spirit, thy shape the same, or undiminished brightness, to be known as when thou stutst in heaven upright and pure, that glory then, when thou no more wast good, departed from thee, and thou resemblest now thy sin and place of doom obscure and foul. But come, for thou, be sure, shalt give account to him who sent us, whose charge is to keep this place inviolable, and these from harm. 
So spake the cherub, and his grave rebuke, severe in youthful beauty, added grace invincible. Abast the devil stood, and felt how awful goodness is, and saw virtue in her shape, how lovely, saw and pined his loss, but chiefly to find here observed his lustful visibly impaired, yet seemed undaunted. If I must contend, said he, best with the best, the sender not the sent, or all at once, more glory will be won, or less be lost. By fear, said Zephon Bold, will save us trial what the least can do, single against the wicked and thence weak. The fiend replied, not overcome with rage, but like a proud steed reigned, went haughty on. Champion his iron curb, to strive or fly he held it vain, or from above had quailed his heart not else dismayed. Now drew thy near the western point, where those half-rounding guards just met, and closing stood in squadron joined, awaiting next command, to whom their chief Gabriel from the front thus called aloud, O oh, friends, I hear the tread of nimble feet hasting this way, and now by glimpse discern ethereal and zephon through the shade, and with them comes a third of regal port, but faded splendour wane, who by his gait and fierce demeanour seems the prince of hell, not likely to part hence without contest. Stand firm, for his look defiance lures. He scarce had ended when those two approached, and brief related whom they bought, where found, how busy it in, what form and posture crouched, to whom with stern regard thus Gabriel spake. Why hast thou, Satan? broke the bounds prescribed to thy transgressions, and disturbed the charge of others, who approve not to transgress by thy example, but have power and right to question thy bold entrance on this place. Implored it seems to violate sleep, and those whose dwelling God have planted here in bliss. To whom was Satan, with contemptuous brow, Gabriel, thou hast in heaven the esteem of wise, and such I held thee. But this question as puts me in doubt. Lives there who loves his pain? He would not, finding way, break loose from hell. Though thither doomed, thou wast thyself, no doubt, and boldly venture to whatever place furthest from pain, where thou mightest hope to change torment with ease and soonest recompense. Dull with delight, which in this place I sought, to thee no reason, who knowest only good, but evil hast not tried, and wilt object, his will who bound us, let him sure abar his iron gates, if he intends our stay in the dark durance. Thus much, what was asked, the rest is true, thy found me where they say, but that implies not violence or harm. Thus he in scorn, the warlike angel moved disdainfully, half smiling, thus replied, O loss of one in heaven, to judge of wise, since Satan fell, whom folly overthrew, and now returns him from his prison scape, gravely in doubt whether to hold them wise or not. Who ask what boldness brought him hither, unlicensed from his bounds in hell prescribed? So wise he judges it to fly from pain, however, to escape his punishment, so judge thee still, presumptuous to the wrath which thou incurrest by flying, meet thy flight sevenfold, and scourge that wisdom back to hell, which taught thee yet no better, that no pain can equal anger infinite provoked. But wherefore thou alone, wherefore with thee? Came not all hell broke loose? Is pain to them less pain, less to be fled, or thou then they less hardy to endure? Courageous chief, the first in flight from pain, hast thou alleged to thy deserted host this cause of flight? Thou surely hast not come sole fugitive. To which the fiend thus answered, frowning stern, Not that I less endure, or shrink from pain, insulting angel. Well thou knowest I stood thy fiercest, 
When in battle to thy aid thou blasting void, thunder made all speed and seconded thy else not dreaded spear, but still thy words at random, as before, argue thy inexperience what behoves from hard essays and ill successes past, a faithful leader, not to hazard all thy ways of danger by himself untried, I, therefore, I alone first undertook to wing the desolate abyss and spy this new created world, whereof in hell fame is not silent, here in hope to find better abode, and my afflicted powers to settle here on earth or in mid-air, though for possession put to try once more. What thou and thy gay legions dare against, whose easier business were to serve thy lord high up in heaven with songs to him his throne, and practice distances to cringe, not fight. To whom the warrior angel soon replied, To say, and straight unsay, pretending first wise to fly pain, professing next a spy, argues no leader, but a lie attract. Satan and cuttest thou faithful ad, O name, O sacred name of faithfulness, profound faithful to whom? To thy rebellious crew. Army of fiends, fit body to fit head. Was this your discipline and faith engaged, your military disobedience to dissolve allegiances to the acknowledged power supreme? And thou sly hypocrite, who now would seem patron of liberty? Who more than thou once fawned and cringed and severely adored heaven's awful monarch? Wherefore but in hope to dispose as him and thyself to reign? But mark what I arrayed thee now, event. Fly thither whence thy fletst. If from this hour within these hollowed limits I appear back to the infernal pit, I drag thee chained and seal thee so as henceforth not to scorn the facile gates of hell to slightly barred. So threatened he, but Satan, to no threats, gave heed, by waxing more in rage, replied, Then, when I am thy captive, talk of chains, proud limiter cherub, but ere then far heavier load thyself expect to feel from my prevailing arm. O heaven's king, ride on thy wings, and thou with they compares us to the yoke, drawest his triumphant wheels in progress through the road of heaven and star paved. While thus he spake, the angelic squadron bright turned fiery red, sharpening in mooned horns thy phalanx, and began to hem him round with ported spears, as thick as when a field of sherris ripe for harvest waving bends her bearded grove of ears, which way the wind sways them. The careful ploughman, doubting, stands least on the threshing floor, his hopeful shaves prove chafe. On the other side, Satan alarmed, collecting all his might dilated stood, like Tenerife or Atlas unremoved. His stature reached the sky, and his crest sat horror plumed nor wanted in his grasp what seemed both spear and shield. Now dreadful deeds might have ensued, nor only paradise in his commotion, but the starry cope of heaven and perhaps of all the elements at least had gone to rack, disturbed and torn with violence of this conflict, had not soon the eternal to prevent such horrid fray hung forth in heaven in his golden scales yet seen betwixt Astera and the scorpion sign, wherein all things created first he weighed. The pendulous round earth with balanced air in counterpose now ponders all events, battles and realms. In these he put two weights, the sequel each of partying and of fight. The latter quick up flew and kicked the beam, which Gabriel, spying, thus bespake the fiend. Satan! I know thy strength, and thou knowest mine, neither our own but given what folly then to boast what arms can do, since I know more than heaven and permits nor mine, though doubled now to trample thee as mire, for proof look up, and read thy lot in yon celestial sign, where thou art weighed, and shone how light, how weak, if thou resist. The fiend looked up and knew his mounted scale aloft. No more, 
but fled murmuring with him fled the shades of night.